Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. My next guest is Vince Vetro, and we talk today about his new film called Sisyphus Rides. There you go. And his new book, The Lending Journey. And you can find out more about Vince and about uh, the filmmakers and about what the film is all about uh, at The Lending Journey. Dot com. Vince is a passionate guy. He's he's kind of all over the place in a way, but in a, in a focused way, which is is kind of cool and makes no sense at all. I I understand that, but that's okay. He's a, he comes from he says a poor family, and he always wanted to be rich. And he talks about loving equally and how we have to have our lines moved a little bit here and there from time to time. He talks about development. He talks about social justice. There's a whole lot going on in this interview. Leadership lessons. I think you're going to really enjoy it for a variety of reasons. So stay tuned. Uh, Don't forget to check out my website, davidpecklive.com, for more interviews, information about my book, Real Changes Incremental, and about my public speaking. And also, uh, you can come alongside and help support uh, Face to Face through patreon.com. Check that out too if you're interested and also rabble.ca for other interviews uh, that I've published from a social justice perspective and also just a whole other host of uh, info and interviews there as well. Stay tuned, Vince Vetro from thelendingjourney.com. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a very special guest today, uh, uh, Vince Vetro. Yes. I got that right. Yes. Usually I ask people before I hit the record <laughs> button. And what's so beautiful about digital is uh, we're 10 seconds in, so I could hit the record button again and start over. It wouldn't cost us no, anything. No, you got it. You got it. I got right. it. I nailed it. Yeah. Uh, it was a quick thank you and a shout out to the Oak Park Neighborhood Center and Michelle Noel for, for uh, lending us a space again today to do an interview. And I think we've got a lot of kids downstairs singing <laughs> songs and hanging out and doing the daycare yeah. thing. So you might hear a little bit of that in the background, but I hope it brings a smile to your face, kind of like it is for Vince and I. So Vince, Thanks for joining me today. Really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk about your new book, uh, The Lending Journey, and in a film. Um, yes. Not sure which chicken or egg uh, here, uh, which came first, but a film called Sisyphus Rides, which yes. because of my philosophical background certainly uh, had my ear and my eye uh, as well. So tell, tell me a little bit about the journey of The Lending Journey. How's that? Yes, well, I was uh, um, doing consulting work in Ecuador. Uh, for an organization called uh, the Christian Missionary Alliance. And um, while I was doing some uh, sort of discovery work for them, we're up in the mountain villages. And every time I would go to a village, um, and we would like visit a local church, you couldn't find anybody. And so what I found out is that there was, people were so poor um, that everybody was out working in the fields, um, including the pastors. When you say you couldn't find anybody, you mean like there was just nobody in the town or the village yeah, yeah, or the like, yeah. communities. I mean, Where is everyone? Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, so uh, especially, let's say more of the community leaders. Right. And so I, I was asking people that I was traveling with who were from those countries, you know, why can't I find these significant people? And they said, well, because they're all out in the fields working because there's just not enough money to do things. And I said, well, why doesn't somebody just lend even especially some of the pastors, why doesn't we just lend them money? Yeah. So they can classic little... white guy with all the solutions, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I spent, I add to that a type A. <laughs> That's right. So, and anyways, type a, yes. so yeah. I, I just so they I just kept saying about lending people money so they could start little businesses so that they could get ahead. And the organization I was working with, they didn't they didn't really understand, and neither did I. I didn't have a clue what I was talking about. I just. I just thought this was a, a an answer, and so right. I just started lending people money out of my pocket. Wow! I, I mean, it was just twenty dollars here, fifty dollars there, and then, and then, and then, uh, slowly we started lending money to more people, and then we started lending so much, well, larger sums that the um, question came up that shouldn't we be a little bit more organized, and so then we. Um, 
then we got our we got our charitable status in Ecuador, and then started developing more throughout the country, and and so it really just it, it evolved into. So did you go from being sort of full time business guy to full time charitable guy, or was I, it a kind of a blend of the I did, two? I did both. You did both. Yeah. So my was that a good idea or a bad idea? At the well, time? you know, I mean, that's a that's a tough that's a tough one because um, the reason we were able to develop our charity so quickly was because we were self-financed because right. I'd done fairly well as a businessman. So I didn't have to go to people asking for right. financial right. help. Right. Right. That was the, you had your own startup capital in a sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I just, I just kept taking money out of my company. Right. right. So I, I didn't have to ask anybody. The only downfall of that now in retrospect is that, was the shareholders' revolt? Is that what the uh, downfall is? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Well, the, the 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 you you you're you've got this great thing going that nobody knows about, right? Because you're yeah. self financed. Yeah, of course, of course. And so you yeah. haven't had to build a network of yeah. of yeah. Um, yeah. donors. Yeah. Right, because you're sure. Yeah. So, and you know that 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 hurt us uh, a little bit, but but I didn't have to report to anybody. I didn't have to ask twenty people. You know what can I do? And when we lost money, which we did, I mean, I did some really bad deals. Uh, there's some stories in the book that uh, uh, about some of the things that we did, and and they're really funny. You'll kill yourself laughing, but they weren't funny at the time we were losing that money. But it was my money that I lost. Right. Right. So right. I didn't have to report back to my board, although we did have a board. You and, just maybe didn't sleep too well for the next couple of nights. Right. Because because yeah. I was yeah. I was upset with wow. myself. Wow. How could I have been so stupid? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I yeah. read the book. I mean, sure. by that point, by the time we had registered a charity, I'd read enough books and I'd studied stuff from the United Nations on how to do microfinance. And I'd read uh, uh, Eunice's book uh, as well. And Bank, so, Banker to the Poor? Banker to the Poor. So I had gained some insight and, and ideas on, on that. And then we had done relatively well in Ecuador, which is, we had then got a phone call saying, hey, we people have heard of what you're doing in Ecuador, will you now bring that project to uh, Nicaragua? And then we moved, we were working in, in both countries. It's a fascinating story, it really is. Uh, you say, I think, uh, I read a proof of the book uh, before I think it was actually published, which was pretty recently, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, in and, 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 and available, October. by the way, folks, on thelendingjourney.com, also probably through Amazon. Through Amazon. I imagine. Yep. Uh, you can find out more about Vince there, about the film, uh, Sisyphus Rides, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, you talked about, it's a really fascinating story to me in the sense that, you know, I love this image of, and I wonder if it probably comes out in the film, but this idea of, you know, you I can see you, you know, reaching into your pocket and, and, and just lending people money. I mean, you don't get much more grassroots than that and yeah. much more driven by a passion and a heart for change, it seems right. to me. Maybe a little misguided at the time, right? Right. Maybe a little Correct. bit white guy with all the answers. I, listen, I get that. Yep. I totally understand that because you're there, right? right? It's in your face. You go, what's going on? Yeah. How can this be possible, right? And yeah. So here's the immediate right. kind of solution. Okay, I can fix things, right. which is lovely because there's a heart and a soul there, I think, right. that, 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 that is missing in a lot of cases. Right. Um, but you talk about in the book at some point about you should have been thinking about inches and not miles, or was it the right. other way around? No, correct. Because it's a bit of both, right? Correct. Right. Well, um, right. I mean, I'm a visionary. Yeah. And and so, visionary pioneers are great for getting things off the ground and for creating the initial structure to 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 develop something. Um, but um, they're not always the best at taking it to the next level right. because they right. go back. Once it's structured, they go in the visionary mode again. Right. Well, right. which isn't visionary mode. It's not what maybe visionary mode in another country, but not to stay where you're, to stay where you're at. But, but uh, yeah. So there's there's that part. But having spent so many years overseas, um, I mean, you know, we talk about in the book. One day we're going to the bank to make a deposit, and we get robbed in the bank. Which but this, is very funny. Yeah, but the security guards won't go after the thieves because they're saying we don't have like a benefit plan for our wives if we die right so you want your money you go chase the guy yeah down. yeah so it's not it's, here borrow it, my cuffs yeah so it what it, in, in a sense it was that but uh, you know such as one one day i get a phone call and there's a coup 
And my director phones and says, I'm in a Red Cross facility. I could be here for four or five days until this thing settles right, down. Right, right. So, so it, yes, it, it, it is true. Maybe we, you know, we, we um, maybe, you know, uh, grew uh, before we were ready. But um, the challenges of... And is that what you meant by the inches and miles? Kind of Yeah, like, like we, you know... Maybe I'm, baby baby steps would have been a little better. Yeah. yeah. Well, the funny thing is, you know, we were in Latin America for 12 years. Wow. So I don't, you know, sometimes, you know, when I think, you know, how many baby steps did we take? Oh, <laughs> absolutely, you know, yeah. Uh, but it, um, you know, maybe instead of... Well, here's the thing. When you walk into a community and you see need you want to address that need. Now you walk yeah. into another community and you see need and you want to address that need. Yeah. And all you can think of is addressing the need. Yeah, of course. And it's not a wise, you know, it's not, uh, it's like my board in the early days would say, if you don't, you have to, to some degree, pay yourself. Yes. So a check yes. would come in and yes. then I would sign the check back and I would send it to South America. And they're going, well, we, that's not yeah. what we told yeah. you. Yeah. We told you have to take a percentage yeah. of this. Sure, you got to sure. take something. But when you see this unbelievable need, you just give the money away, which isn't a wise... No, it's not It's not sustainable. Anyone who's worked in the field right. uh, knows it's not sustainable. Right. And what's right. ironic is, this is, I would argue, I would think, and I hardly know you at all, it runs totally contrary to your business side, right? Um, so it's like this interesting paradoxical mix. It right? is. Now, I grew up in a foster family, so I have, I've got... Maybe twenty-five foster brothers, yes. three adopted brothers. You know, it's a lot four of stockings at sisters. Christmas, man. That's, uh... It was great, yeah. So, <laughs> so at times there were ten of us. Yeah. Now, so I'm one of the biological children of my parents, but we grew up. We grew up around need, seeing people in need, all the time, and they just came into our house and they became part of the family. So it was just natural when you saw somebody in need that you met the need. Well, so, <laughs> so that part of your brain that controls, I, I need to help, sometimes supersedes the part of your brain that says, okay, let, let, we need to be more methodical about this. We took everybody. My parents just, you had a need, we brought you in. And if mm. we didn't have a space for you, to, we, they blow up an air mattress. That's an incredible gift. I, I, I wrote in the margin of the book, I remember this now, uh, uh, several places, just the, this this gift of hospitality and oh. hospitable environment that you grew up in, wanting yeah. to you when when I knew we would meet, wanting to ask you about that. I too grew up in a house where you didn't have to take your shoes off, right. and that I, it so stands out to me when I go to somebody's house now and they, oh don't leave your shoes on, we don't take your shoes, off, you know, and it's yeah. rare, right? Right. But but it's just this metaphor. It's this I don't yeah. know gift. It's generous. Yeah. It's yeah. open right yeah. it's about a space to yeah. be you you right. know and that sounds right. exactly like what you grew well up in. yeah and when people say to me what's the best part of you doing ministry i say when i get to sit on a dirt floor and eat with a family off one plate we're sharing one cup who knows yeah yeah what yeah sickness may be there but i never did i never wanted to build the ministry for the ministry I always built the ministry because I loved being with the people. Like right, that, right, but, right. But as I've talked to a lot of guys who've built uh, charitable ministries, the the management of the ministry, which has to happen, it has to happen, of, of your charity, whatever it is that you're doing, that, ha that has to happen. So in order to do what you really want to do, you've got to do the other part. And sometimes the other part takes 70% of your time. Sure. Sure. So you get thirty percent to do what you really want to do. Right. But right. for me to sit on the floor and eat with people, um, yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah, have that, to do the other side. So I, I, I definitely want to talk about that as well. That's something else that you. Uh, I'll get the quote from the book, but you you wrap it up by talking about development. I mean, for me, the book was was very narrative driven. Lots of stories. Lots of, you know, um, it's, it's startup kind of like stories in a sense, but yeah. also. I think there's some really great lessons there to be learned for anybody that wants to do development anywhere in the world, right. you know, that wants to, you know, lend a hand, as right. it were, uh, from a fundraising perspective, but also rooting and embedding themselves somewhere. I think there's there's lots to be learned. But you talk about community, 
And that's certainly a thread that, that comes out in the book for sure, the yeah. sense that this has to be done with others yeah. in mind. And that yeah. doesn't mean just others being present in the room. Right. I got the sense that this has to be about give and take. Right. This has to be about listening. Right. And, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm struck personally and as a development guy and so many uh, you know, parachute into a, a place and don't have the, either the ability or the willingness or the desire to listen well. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And you know, it, it, the, the reason probably I was respected or, or in slash loved the most was because I kept coming back. Right. I basically, it became my second home was whatever country I was working in Latin America and truly was my home because my home growing up was the United Nations. So to walk into another country right, and right. say, I'm home, I, ha I didn't have to do, sure, the cultural issue I had to deal with, I had to grow and I had to learn and I had to mature. Um, but the other side, um, you know, and probably initially people were saying, well, this guy's a fake and a phony because there's no way you can call me family when you've just met me. Well, right. When you right. grow up right. and you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you got a new brother, and he's right. sharing your room. The United Nations. That's the United Nations you're talking about. Yeah, yes. Like yeah, you're, not the United Nations. No. Right. Right. Not the United Nations. <laughs> yes. but not your, like your dad was an ambassador right. to the UN in no, Micronesia. No. no. Right. Yeah. But you. But when you grow up in that environment, that your parents say, "Okay, here's Tommy," and Tommy came last night, and he could be with us for the next five years. So he's now your brother. You know what? And it didn't matter whether he was an Aboriginal Indian. Yeah. It didn't matter whether he um, was from India. It didn't matter whether he was Hispanic. Uh, like our house was just so it was easy to call everybody family because you you didn't know any different. Um, and so that's what it was like in in Latin. You America. say here a quote. I was determined to find a way uh, to leave my own unique footprints in the world. I was not easily intimidated. And I seem to have this thing about injustice and the cruelty of picking on people who can't defend themselves. Right, right. That that. Uh, so that was a seed that was planted clearly pretty early. Oh, for sure. And then not just planted, but watered and nurtured and over the years. Right, right. I watched my mother. I just, well, I mean, both my parents, but you know, your fathers are usually out earning money to keep the roof over your head. Right. But you're watching your your your, you know, our mothers are generally the ones who are more merciful and graceful. Right. And, and so you watch that um, and you, you, uh, you know, 24 hours a day. Well, how can it not have an impact, right? Absolutely. I mean, to me, this is a book. This is what's so wonderful to me about the whole podcasting thing that I do when, when I get to interview people. And, and I interviewed a young guy recently um, uh, about a film called uh, Eastern about a school in Toronto where this great basketball team uh, over the years had been fostered and nurtured and, and raised basically it's an old school that was eventually closed in Regent Park in Toronto and and I mean it's a tragic story it's a beautiful story it's it's sad and, and, and wonderful and uplifting and all these things and it's about a, the basketball team and the coaches right. but it's so not about right. basketball it's about everything but basketball right. it's about teaching and community right. and human contact right. and building relationships right. and trust everybody's story is like right. that this is what I so love about right. about about all of this right. work and maybe maybe there's something there from your comment about injustice and and this sense of being at risk right and and aren't we all in some way right, right? right. needy and and at risk yeah you know yeah and the answer is not to uh, the answer is you know that there's that quote um, give a person a fish feed them for a day you know um, you teach them the fish, you feed them for a lifetime. You know what? That's North American capitalistic thinking. Yeah. But this is good. Sure. The the tagline that we had was you have to to truly see transformation, you have to sit down and eat the fish with them. Right. It's not enough to teach them the fish cuz that's not going to transform them. You don't transform people by giving them money. That's that's and it's a wonderful North American thing cuz we have to have that. But that is not what transforms the world. What transforms the world is you got to stay okay, and so, eat the fish so now I'm to get to know them. Let's bring that quote in. I, I don't know where it is exactly. I'll find it. But, but that's, that's the community piece I was just talking yeah. about seconds ago. So yeah. it's about, about 
building real relationships. It's, I, mean, I mean, development is so focused on this idea of participation and participatory rural appraisals and participatory action research and all these right. acronyms and isn't it wonderful and, and we've got to include people on the ground, men, right. women, boys, you know, men, women, children, you know, boys and girls, etc. It's very inclusive, it seems, but I'm not always sure the, U, the real UNs of the world, the World Banks, the IMFs, the World Visions and so on, are willing to actually eat with the families that they're working with. And, and, and I don't want to be like hypercritical, right. but at the same time, sometimes I wonder if there's almost a, an anti-relational edge that's being right. imposed, not by design, no, but by default. Well, what do we value most? And I've taken so many people overseas with me. We value most time. And we would be willing to give up money before we give up time. But time is the answer to transform people's lives. Because, you know, I mean, people know you care when you keep showing up. Mm. Now mm. they're ready to listen. But, but they aren't going to be transformed by money. Money is important, but it isn't the transformational element that has the biggest impact. Because when they know you care, now they say, okay, I value what they have to say. Um, Here's the line here. It's, it's near the end of the book. You say uh, something about not knowing. But now I know it can't be a solo effort. Go, going forward, I'll remember that in the long run, the only way anybody gets anything done is together with others. Close right. quote. Right? Anything done, you say. Right. <laughs> right? right? Business, relationship, doesn't matter what you want right. to do. you got to do it with others. And I, you, you've used a small O on others. The existentialist in me, the philosopher in me, wants to use a yeah. capital O if yeah. that makes any sense yeah. at all. We'll leave that for another interview. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but there's a there there has to be this this sense of of inclusion and affirmation and 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 and, and genuine authentic validation. And, and yeah. what I'm hearing you say is that can happen over a meal, right? And, and over time, obviously. and over time, right? Yeah. Over and over and a, a lot. commitment, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's good. It's so and, great. And yeah. a big part so of important. it too is in um, that uh, the businessman, the, the, the philosopher in me had to tell the businessman in me was don't think it's going to happen in one generation. Right. So when you're helping a mother, what you're really doing is helping the daughter because the daughter is watching the mother. And even if the mother fails, the daughter watched the mom attempt to succeed. Right. So when we look at somebody we're helping and they may fail, that's perceived failure from our perspective. We don't know the impact of that on the next generation. And so right. we really right. can't think right. five, 10 years. We got to think way further down the road that the impact of what we're doing isn't going to be felt. Yeah. And we got to get over got to get over that. Think think in miles but maybe behave in inches. Right. Right? Move in inches, think in miles. Right. I think I think No, that, no, that's good. That's I, good. Yeah. Yeah. So before we move into the film, I want to I want to talk a little bit to uh, about a little bit more about development and and one another quote from the book which was brilliant. Um but so you said before the tape was rolling that you you grew up poor but always wanted to be rich. Right. Tell me about that a little bit in the sense of, to me, it's not the guy I'm talking to right now, in, in a sense, based on what yeah. I'm hearing you say about uh, coming alongside others, sharing yeah. a meal with people, and uh, of any uh, right. race, religion, or whatever, it doesn't yeah. matter, right? So yeah. there's this sense of community about you that doesn't speak of, yeah. of, of corporate capitalism. Well, you, I mean, I, um, I was fortunate, graduated from University of Waterloo, um, had an opportunity to go in business. By the time I was 31, I had um, five companies, three in Ontario, two in Alberta. I had hmm. over 200 uh, uh, full and part-time staff. Wow. And I woke up at 31, maybe 31, 32, and I just said, I really believed that money was the key to happiness. And the more I had, the happier I'd be. I woke up one morning. You you really did believe that. Oh gosh, I see that's lock, stock and barrel. I'm fascinated to know where that came from. But well, anyway, because I saw other people who had it, oh, okay. and they looked happy. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, right. yeah. They looked happy driving their nice cars. They looked happy driving their Beamer convertibles and this. And I and I and I I bought that because uh, I I hadn't you know hadn't experienced that world. And then I just woke up one day and I thought, if this if this is 
and I and I had done really well. I had no debt. My my companies were doing really well or making lots of money, and I just thought, man, if this is life, if this is what it's all about for the next thirty years, then there's something wrong because I'm not happy, and and it just started me on this journey. So so okay, these things never happen just because of some crazy dream that you had overnight. Nope. The expression is overnight. But looking back now, as you reflect, what was going on, would you say, that was injecting that kind of, this this thinking, this new approach in your life, that maybe it wasn't the Beamer, maybe it wasn't the, the cash and the deposit. You're right. It, was, it, it wasn't just one night. You're right. It just wasn't. Because it wasn't help. I mean, I was helping people because I was employing them. Which is of good. course, and like that's it's, good. That's, of course, that's it great is great value. So Absolutely, you, you don't yeah, want yeah, to yeah. demean those you people. Can't. No, no, no. Who say totally I find va- just because you didn't find value, no, and it you're doesn't providing mean it's not value. Providing right. for their families, they're providing right. for other. There's incredible value right. in it. Yep. But for yep. me, I, it just was empty. Hmm. It just, it just, hmm. uh, it just was was empty, and and uh, I wanted to help. I wanted to help people in a different way, and and does that connect back to your upbringing? Do you think? Sure, absolutely. In a sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, 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 so maybe absolutely. that sense of emptiness was coming out of holy smokes. Look what my parents were able to do. Geez, maybe I should be kind of following in their footsteps. Right. Sort of. Or you know what? I mean, you know, it, it's you know, I, I sometimes ask myself that. So where's the divine providence in all of this? Because I think at heart. Uh, I was always a social justice person, mm. but it just happened that I ended up going into business. I, you, you know what I mean? It's just how it unfolded. Um, I just think uh, there probably was a reason why I had to go into business. You know, maybe I had to see, maybe if I hadn't have, I would have always thought, you know what, that's where it is, that's where it is. Now I can I can walk into a room and speak anywhere and just say, hey, let me tell you. Yeah. I lived there and I lived here. Yeah. And, and by the way, if you want to hire uh, Vince to speak, it's the lendingjourney.com. Yeah, lendingjourney.com, yeah. <laughs> we'll so get yeah, a few so more maybe, plugs in before this So maybe that's out. what it, maybe it was yeah. divine providence well, that I and, ended up and, in And business. you know what? Maybe it's still too early to tell. Oh, maybe you yeah. need to put another 20 years in before you look back and go, oh, right. okay, right. now it makes perfect sense. But, but I was just going to say, I mean, would you have been in a position to have been in, was it Ecuador? Right. Lending people money out of your no. pocket had you not no. been the business guy no. that you were in the first no. place, and, right? No, for sure. And for ten years, from when I was forty to when I was fifty, I spent probably two days, maybe three days a month, mm. running my business. The rest of the time, I was traveling around the world. Wow. Okay. Now, where do you get that opportunity? Yeah, sure. And sure, still, sure, sure. every week, I still got a paycheck. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah, you yeah. know. You know, it, so I'm dying to find out. The book opens with the line, "Everything starts with breakfast." Um, what uh, I've, you've shared a lot of breakfasts apparently over the years, right? And right, and that's where back to the meal, yeah, We're back to community, right? Yeah, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, I mean, because uh, Yan and I were joking. Yeah, uh, Yan Sochek uh, helped me write the book, and. Um, Almost every one of our meetings was over breakfast. Over breakfast, we okay. were talking about yes. different aspects of. Uh, Little disappointed you know. it wasn't over shots of Russian vodka. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wrong. okay with breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Jan would have said over scotch. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah. but so Russian vodka is yeah. not a bad but where place do you, to start. Where do relationships get yeah. built? Right, they get absolutely. they get built around. You meet with somebody over a breakfast, yeah. and then absolutely. you pull out a pen and. Uh, Oh, you there's start something, writing all over there's napkin. something I think very human, very you know, uh, uh, almost essential to being human that when you when you sit down and you share a meal authentically with somebody, it right. really is quite quite remarkable. There's a your op- it's uh, your it's it's um, hmm, vulnerability, authenticity, right. sort yeah. of. There's a sense of there's yeah. a sense of uh, transparency there, yeah. you know. And yeah. sometimes it can be really awkward. Yeah, you know those. Fa- there's a reason why at family Christmases. Uh, people end up in arguments, you know? Right. Right? And right, that sure. ha- certainly happened in our home for sure. years, and I've heard about it from uh, many yeah. others. So I grew up in an Italian family where things are loud. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting because I, I remember I had a, I was down in in Nicaragua. I had a couple of uh, business guys with me, and we just we just ran into the office for about 20 minutes. And there was a woman there who was repaying a loan. And I didn't know her well. I mean, I knew of her, but I didn't know her well. And then... Our director introduced the guests that I had with me to this woman, and she made she said this line. She said, and it and it connects with the doing the breakfast. She said, 
she said, Vince, she said, you just keep showing up here. She said, you're here all the time. You just keep showing up time after time after time. And she said, this is what I know a true man is. Mm. She said, because so many of our men, they just leave us. I mean, it, you know, these Latin American countries, it's just it, in so many cases, the young girls get pregnant and the, and the guys disappear. But I think it's that same thing. You do breakfast and then you do it again and then you do it again. And then you build relationships up, right? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that's where you go deeper and, and deeper into the relationships as that level of trust um, builds. But it ha has to be, so, and it goes back to the time thing, right? So, How much time? So tell me, tell me about the film. Uh, okay. book came after the film, I believe. The book came after the film. The uh, film is sort of driven by a bike ride to some degree. Yes. That was yeah. a fundraising journey adventure. Yes. Yeah. So um, I had uh, uh, one of my, uh, I was on the phone with one of my friends from uh, Dallas, Texas. And we were, we were talking, you know, maybe we were just talking about life. And she said, Vince, if we're, she, we were talking about fundraising at one point, And she said, Vince, your life is about adventure and activity she said that's what drives you she, she so she said why don't you do a fundraising activity for your charity based around adventure and activity and just as she said that i was looking out my window from my home and there was a lone cyclist uh cycling and i thought wow what about a cycling uh, trip and what about a cycling trip across uh somewhere in latin america and then i thought well what if, let's do nicaragua and we'll do from sea level up into the mountains. So something that's really challenging. And then we'll get women who we've lent money to, to ride, do this difficult ride with us. And uh, it was in the process of that that I ran into uh, Tim Alberts, who um, has a production company. And, and we're, we're at a, we're at a um, sort of at a Woodstock type of, uh, you know, music festival sitting on our lawn chairs. And we, we both happened to be there. I didn't know he was going to be there. He didn't know. And we just ran in and he said, what are you doing? I told him and he said, I'd love to do a documentary. Mm -hmm. And the more he heard uh, about the story of it, you know, I wanted the bike ride to be representative of doing work in a third world country. And it's an uphill battle. Like it's just every day is a struggle every day something goes wrong but there's great value in the struggle so we're having this conversation and he said i know what i want to call the documentary mm. he said and so we got on the story of sisyphus, sisyphus right. but the value it it's it's the value of the struggle mm -hmm. and, and if there was ever anything i could that i could you know share with audiences as i speak um is the great value that comes from struggle and how do you build an attitude of understanding the value of struggle mm -hmm. well that is the rock up the hill right I that's mean, the rock up the hill and and what's interesting too for me is that's the inches over the miles you're not pushing a rock up a hill mile by mile it's no. it's increment by increment right and right. it's hard sweaty troubling painful work right uh, yeah. in so many ways and and, yeah. and 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 you could say that the same about anything relationships can be like that yeah. uh, building a business can be like that yeah. right and and writing a book uh, right. or whatever the case might be so it's a great a great metaphor for so many things right um um, you know, Camus was obviously trying to get over the whole notion of meaninglessness. Right. And that's a, also in suicide. And that's right. time for, uh, another conversation. Right, right. Uh, but maybe somebody will pick it up. It's a great book. It's a great read. It really is. I mean, it's a Greek myth, but it's also a great book by Albert uh, uh, Camus. Right. You know, the French existentialist, yeah, as yeah, you yeah. know. But uh, for for those of you out in... Uh, in uh, podcast land, check it out. Uh, I think the opening book, of, uh, the opening line of the book is, "If life is meaningless, then the most important question is suicide." Uh, right. I think that's the opening line, right? And, right. and so, that, hence, finding meaning in the struggle, finding right. meaning in the increment. Right. And the natural inclination is to run. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. Let the boulder roll down and get the heck out of the way. Right. Yeah. Off I go. Let somebody else deal with it. Right, and yeah. so you, you, you only move forward to the degree that you can engage the struggle because as you, as you learn from the struggle, then it's no longer a struggle. Well, and you know what? I just had to thought, Vince. I mean, maybe if Sisyphus had a, had a few more breakfasts, 
with a few folks. Yeah. He might have had a couple other people to help him with the boulder. Or if he was yakking to the guy yeah. on the other mountain who was pushing his boulder yeah. up to us yeah. saying, like, how, hey, can how, we work, are you, how are you dealing with it? How can we work together on this, right? We're back yeah. to community and inclusion and, and all that. I think it's really, yeah. it's really or wonderful. Sure, or or, yeah. Yeah. or I mean, one guy says, well, you know, my rock fell back 10 feet yesterday. Yeah. Oh, how'd that make you feel? Yeah. It made me feel terrible. Yeah. But I feel a lot better telling somebody I feel terrible. That's right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Let me encourage yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is uh, like you say at the end of the book, the, the only way to do anything is with others, right? Because yeah. you can commiserate, you can, you can, you can, you can affirm and you can, yeah. you can validate and yeah. say, you know what? Uh, I don't have the answer, but I'm kind of going through something yeah. similar. Let's talk about it some yeah. more. Let's get together and over breakfast yeah. and unpack this together. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's uh, to, to, truly meaningful. And I think... That's one of the many lessons from, I don't know about the film, but certainly yeah. from the book, well, for development workers, for anyone, frankly. Yeah. In the documentary, there's a tiny section in the documentary. There, we're sitting at a bus stop in uh, Managua, Nicaragua, and this woman, is, she tells a story, and it'll give you the Coles notes. She said um, she was sitting, she was um, dropping off some of her products at a store. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning, and she had been up since 5 and she was really dirty by that by that point. And a business, and it not, you know, not to say that all business people are this way, but a business guy came out of it with a suit on and looked at her. And she said to me, she said, Vince, he looked at me like I was absolutely nothing. Mm. Like I was just, might as well have been mm. the dirt on the mm. ground. Mm. And she said, what's interesting is you came here, you looked at me, you saw something totally different and lent me the money to become a micro entrepreneur and so that's we right we we see we we invest we see something different in somebody and we come along come alongside them J just as if somebody you know might have come along sisyphus and said hey it's not the end of the world that you're pushing yeah, up yeah 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 thanks and you know what actually your your muscles and your your calves look amazing and sure sure you have really strong forearms and yeah yeah Lot, lots of uh, lots of lessons to learn. Yeah. Before we wrap it up, I uh, well actually, why don't you before I read this quote out of the book, tell where can people see the film? Is it has it done a festival route? Is it going to do festivals? Yes, yes. And so the challenging thing right now is that we can't we can't release uh, the film festivals won't allow you to release the documentary for people to watch it because they they somehow there's exclusive rights i'm sure yeah, yeah doing sure, it. so sure. we're in a social justice film festival in toronto in june uh, we were just in um a film festival in erie pennsylvania so i mean as as we find out more and more of the film festivals that we're going to be in we'll certainly be putting that up on the website so people can yeah so you know, the first sort of public viewing will be when the first uh, public view we had we had a sort of a private showing sure. uh, when it came out in um, I think it was November, and um, then I, I have to double check with Tim when when the first film festival that we we're in in Toronto. I have the right now the first one we're in is the summer of two thousand and seventeen. Oh, okay. It's a social justice film festival, and then um, and that's in Toronto. And that's in Toronto. Oh, okay. That's not real world, is it? You know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm sure. I haven't gotten all the. Yeah, no, it's fine. From, doesn't, from doesn't, our, no, it doesn't uh, matter. There's so many. Company. In fact, right. there, there's just so many festivals. Right. There's one Oakville, Hamilton. I just found out about another one coming up. Social justice in February locally. Yeah. So they're all over. Right, and we're just great. learning. Like again, yeah. that we're yeah. just we're just cool. Uh, well, obviously, check out the website lendingjourney.com for yep. more information about the film, the book, uh, Vince and his story, and and so on. Quote: The institutionalization of charity is antichrist. Close. <laughs> quote right explaining what he meant by that he said that it isn't possible to love according to regulation by prescript or by plan to call that love is blasphemous it's something else like maybe good works good works are great but to affect change you need to affect people and the best way to affect people is to love them close quote um, like the song says you say in the book you got to be there right. tell me about the quote Tell me about a little bit as we wrap this up, because this is a pretty big lesson, it seems to me. That's quite a quote to throw in chapter seven, titled entitled The Lending Journey. Um, the institutionalization of charity is antichrist. And then there's lessons here, not only that you learned, but I think there's some big lessons here for us as well. Uh, right. And, and I, I think it goes back to the earlier part of our conversation. You, you can't throw money 
at something, or you can't say, if you say I'm, I'm basing success on giving out 500 loans with an 85 to 90% repayment rate, that's, that's not transformation. That's just, that's just saying we were able to push people to get this return on money, but they could be dead tomorrow. They, you could have, you could have marriages falling apart. You could have parents abusing their kids. That's not, you haven't succeeded. To succeed, you've got to shrink it and say, and I know this is a bit idealistic, but you have to get involved in the lives of the people you're helping. For me to lend you $300 and feel really good, that's not the answer. That's institutionalized. What I have to do, I have to get involved in the messiness of your life. So when my phone rings at two o'clock in the morning and someone said, Vince, we just had a guy beat up his wife, what do we do? Or we just had a daughter run away, or we just found out a young girl is pregnant and the parents are broken. That's the reality of truly loving the people. But to say, to create a dividing line and say, love only extends till you hit the line of which I'm not prepared to go anymore. <laughs> that's, that's, that your line has to move. Mm. Luckily for me, I mm. grew up, I, I was born into a family where there was no line. You mm. loved everybody who walked through the door equally. It, I didn't have to learn that lesson. I, I was brought up in that lesson. And it, it's something I can give back to the world that I didn't have to work really hard at, right? Because it just, and, and most things that come naturally to us where it's easier for us to give back to people. And that's really what that meant is you can't, you can't put all these numbers and these systems in place to the detriment of not looking at the person uh, and saying, but aren't they more important than going back to our financial supporters and saying, okay, well, we've got 95% repayment. Does that really say it's good. their life was transformed? But it's, it, it, is, it is a great challenge for anybody running a charity in North America. Is that, is that well, and for and for development practitioners on the ground, right, right. You got to have the you got to have their winning like story, have, uh, and, and, and right. And it's almost as if your challenge is not to reduce this to you know the one liner, but your challenge is have a few more meals with the people you're working with. Right. That's that's like, you know what I mean. Like that's that, a pretty. I'm getting a little shiver. That's kind oh, of a huge takeaway, right? You, you know, one of my best friends in Latin America. I remember asking him once. Uh, I said, Ricardo. What is the most... How come I'm not surprised his name's Ricardo? <laughs> Ricardo Chikawasai. Nice. That's He's a Quechua awesome. Indian. Cool. And I said to him, one of my best, what a best great name. friend, Chikawasai. Anyways, I said, what is more important to, more important than anything else when I bring North Americans here with me? Hmm. And he said, Vince, it's that they sit and eat what we eat. Wow. Wow. That's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah. He said that because it says something about your culture when you'll sit down and eat with us and engage our culture. Yeah, that's amazing. Wait, what a, we just wouldn't think that as North Americans. Yeah. We would think, yeah. what can I do for you? They're going, no, no, right. no, not right. what you can right. do for right. me. Right. Just share, just share in this experience yeah. with us together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, become it's, a part of my life. Yeah, it's amazing. Listen, Vince, thanks so much. I mean, I yeah, it's a real challenge. It's a, it's encouraging. It's a it's a really uh, a powerful story. But I love the you got you got it. The the line has to move right. as we learn how to love equally. Wow, yeah. that's uh, that's yep. a challenge for for me for for every one of us in in pretty much everything we do. So it's a thanks. subconscious thing. It's huge. Uh, yeah. The 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 book is the lending journey. The film is Sisyphus Rides. It's coming soon. Uh, yes. to a theater near you and uh, check out thelendingjourney.com for more information about the film about the book and about uh, about your speaking and so on Vince thanks a lot for your time today thank you